Retina Rounds, episode number 106. Metallic Intraocular Foreign Body. This week, Retina Rounds welcomes Dr. Omar Shakir as our guest surgeon, who will share a series of cases performed in an office-based surgery setting. For those of you who are unfamiliar with office-based surgery, or OBS for short, please check out podcast number 15 with Dr. Shakir. Briefly, Dr. Shakir performs surgery in an operating room that's located in his clinic. The operating room is just like any other operating room and is voluntarily accredited by the Joint Commission. However, unlike surgery in an ambulatory surgery center, OBS surgeries are done without IV sedation. Instead, an oral benzodiazepine is used to manage anxiety and a subtenon's block is employed to manage pain. Since there's no intravenous sedation, the patient does not need to be NPO for surgery. And for Dr. Shakir, this also means no need for preoperative medical clearance. The advantages to this approach include greater surgeon control over the surgical experience and access to the operating room. While intriguing, I had some questions. First, is surgery in this type of setting safe? Also, what types of cases can reasonably be performed with OBS? So I asked Dr. Shakir to show us a representative group of OBS cases. The first case today is an IOFB, which I consider to be a complex case and was surprised to see it performed in an office-based surgery setting. Dr. Shakir explained to me that he not only uses OBS for expedited access, but also to provide access for patients who otherwise may not have the means to get surgical care. The patient in this case is an uninsured, undocumented 50-year-old Brazilian construction worker who had a high-velocity metallic foreign body enter through his peripheral cornea, penetrating his lens and lodging in the retina. If surgery were performed in a hospital-based setting, for example, the patient would likely receive a bill for tens of thousands of dollars. Instead, this patient had surgery free of charge in Dr. Shakir's OBS as part of his charitable foundation. It's an application of OBS that I hadn't really thought about, so let's see how the case goes. Okay, you can see our patient here has uh, what looks to be a paracentral corneal wound, uh, and you can see some fibrosis and some iris sinicae to the anterior lens capsule. Uh, and so Dr. Shakir is going to fill the anterior chamber with some viscoelastic, create a clear corneal wound, and with a cyclodialysis spatula, lyse uh, those sinicae to the capsule. Now capsular rexus has been performed, and hydrodissection here is uh, performed, uh, and with a fake emulsification probe, the lens uh, material is removed. Now the posterior uh, capsule has been violated and so Dr. Shakir has converted here to an anterior vitrectomy. And he's gonna go ahead and remove uh, both the cortical fragments and any vitreous that may have migrated anteriorly you know, using some viscoelastic uh, to fill the anterior chamber and hopefully prevent any additional uh, vitreous from migrating anteriorly. So now the uh, pars plana trocars are placed and before performing the pars plane of vitrectomy, you can see Dr. Shakir is gonna go ahead and perform an anterior vitrectomy through the, uh, the clear corneal wound uh, to remove any vitreous that may be there anteriorly. You can see uh, much more clearly now that uh, paracentral uh, corneal uh, scar, uh, it was a self-sealing corneal scar where that IOFB uh, penetrated the eye. Now some uh, pars plana vitrectomy uh, to draw any uh, vitreous that's uh, in the anterior chamber back down into the posterior segment. And now he's gonna go on to a uh, post, uh, posterior vitrectomy. So a core vitrectomy being performed here, you can see the imprint of where that IOFB once was, but we don't actually see the IOFB at this stage, so that it must have gotten loose and, and is maybe lodged in the peripheral vitreous uh, somewhere. It's important uh, when performing the vitrectomy here when an IOFB is loose to go ahead and do this slowly and carefully. Of course, this video has been sped up uh, so that we can get through the case, but when you're performing these cases, it's important to do this process slowly so that's not, to not create any uh, excess turbulence and potentially any damage to the retina with the IOFB. So now you can see that that IOFB has come free from the peripheral vitreous and using some forceps that look like they've been expanded to accommodate the IOFB, that IOFB is grasped and then brought into the anterior chamber. And now through that clear corneal wound, the IOFB uh, is being uh, delivered with the assistance of, uh, of some forceps. Okay, once that IOFB has been removed, Dr. Shakir is going to apply some laser uh, around the area where that IOFB was embedded in the retina. And now you can see some additional laser being performed inferiorly where that, that IOFB was lodged in the vitreous and unfortunately created a small tear of the retina and a, a localized retinal detachment. So Dr. Shakir has uh, cleaned up the vitreous in this area and is applying some laser to uh, barricade the retinal break and the, that localized detachment. And now um, uh, silicone oil is being used 
as a tamponade agent. Uh, you'll notice also that the anterior capsule was left intact, uh, and that, that was left intact so that uh, Dr. Shakir can put in a sulcus intraocular lens at a later date. That's important when putting in uh, the silicon oil to make sure that you're venting the air so as to not um, uh, allow the intraocular pressure to rise uh, to dangerously high levels. And now Dr. Shakir has achieved the oil fill that he wants. Uh, you can see that there's some air in the anterior chamber. Uh, and you can also see here in the inferior iris that a peripheral iridotomy has been created. And that's going to help to uh, uh, decrease the risk for pupillary block. Now this patient ended up doing well. The retina remained attached. And Dr. Shakir is planning for oil removal and a secondary lens implantation at a later date. So really uh, interesting application of office-based surgery. Certainly uh, this case appeared to go just as it might in any other surgical setting. Uh, so we want to thank Dr. Shakir for sharing this case with us and we look forward to seeing more office-based surgeries in the coming week. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. You'll get a notification every time a new video is posted. And if you have an interesting video or a tip or trick that you'd like to share, please follow the links on our website and you can upload your video there. Thanks so much for watching.